Hello guys, we're back. In our last video, we talked about the four different methods we're gonna to use to rank our um, capital assets. Um, the payback period, the accounting rate of return, MPV and IRR. So I have them all here for us, written out and then with the abbreviations that your book uses. That way, if I shorthand it at any point, you can at least go back here and see what the heck was PM? Oh yeah, that was the payback period method. Right, so I have those written full out for you there. Now something to note about the first two methods, these ones, um, they are easy to calculate, easy to calculate. They also do not consider the time value of money, time value of money, okay, which is partly why they're easier to calculate because they don't have that added um, layer of taking into account the time value of money, which is extra calculations, right? So the first two are usually ranked first because they are less complex to calculate, right? So if we have 20 different assets that we're trying to rank against, we're going to use these easy calculations first because if they don't even pass the baseline criteria in the first, the simple um, formulas, they're probably not going to pass on to the next level and use these more sophisticated methods. So that's why payback period and accounting rate of return are used first. And a company might just pick one. They might say, hey, we require a payback period of five years. And so then we can quickly calculate that for all 20 competing projects. Maybe only half of those 20 meet the payback period criteria of five-year payback. Then those 10 could continue on to the more sophisticated formulas and say, okay, of those 10, now we're going to consider the time value of money, and then we're going to prioritize those 10, and then ultimately make our final uh, rec final recommendation. Okay, so the last two formulas, consider the time value of money. If you're like, what is the time value of money? Do you remember last semester, if you had me, we did bonds and we calculated the issue price of bonds using those present value tables. Remember those terrible tables? Mm -hmm. That is something we'll re revisit in this chapter when we get to the last two formulas. All right, for now, we're gonna focus on the payback period method. It's usually used as the first screening tool because it's easy to calculate. This one particularly is easy for anyone to understand which maybe isn't the case for accounting rate of return, but payback period, anyone can understand it. It's putting in regular speak, you know, regular terms, um, and it's quick to calculate. All right, so let's look at the payback period method first. So there's two different formulas depending on if the cash flows generated by the asset are even or uneven. Okay, so if we have even cash flows, we'll have one formula. And if we have uneven cash flows generated by the capital asset, we'll use a different format. Let me back up and give you the formula for the payback period method. So this calculates R, calculates, calculates, oh my gosh, why can't I spell today? Calculates the length of time to recover initial investment. So if a particular capital asset costs $25,000, how many years before we get that $25,000 back before it pays for itself based on the um, extra revenue that it's bringing in, based on its decreased um, operating costs, right? How much time before it brings back that initial investment? So that's the definition. That's what the payback period calculates. It's expressed, expressed in years, right? Whereas others might be expressed, other formulas might be expressed as like a percentage. This one is going to be expressed in years, which helps it be um, more palatable, easy to understand. All right, so the formula, if the particular capital asset generates even cash flows, that means at the end of year one, this particular machine generates $3,000, end of year two, $3,000, end of year three, $3,000. So it's every year generating the same amount of cash flows. So if it produces even cash flows, your formula is going to be to take your initial investment, which is how much you paid for the capital asset, 
So if we paid $25,000 for that commercial oven, that would be the cost of our initial investment and divide it by that net annual cash flow. Okay. And then the result will be in years. So this might be the only sticky spot, net annual cash flow. Maybe they don't give you a net annual cash flows. Maybe instead they give you the cash inflows and they give you the cash outflows, right? So they tell you how much this commercial oven will generate in cash for the company and then how much it will cost in operating costs. So just subtract, that gives you your net annual cash flow. Okay, so in case they don't give that to you, I bet they'll give you cash inflows and cash outflows. Subtract the outlo outflows from your inflows to get your denominator. Okay, so that is the payback period with even cash flows. In the next video, we will see the payback period for uneven cash flows. Okay, that's when the capital asset produces different cash flows. Two, three, right? So maybe in the first year it produces 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. So every year it's different. So that's going to impact the um, format that we can use. So we'll see that in the next video.